Wine has many abilities. It enhances a meal, it sets the mood, it sparks conversation. And if you ask a wine aficionado, it can also breathe, cry, and become corked. These wine terms are often cited, but little understood. So here to translate is Dr. Gavin Sachs of Cornell University's Viticulture and Enology program. You open the wine, and wow, you really want a glass of wine. But there's some fussy person at the table who says, oh, no, 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 no. You have to let it breathe. Ah, relaxing, soothing breathing. And perhaps they'll say, let it breathe for two minutes or 20 minutes or an hour. What does that do outside of make you very frustrated that you can't have a glass of wine? If you guess that your wine is taking in oxygen from the room, you're right, but... Just like there is a limit to how much salt or sugar you can get dissolved into a wine, there's a limit to how much oxygen you can get dissolved into a wine as well. And at room temperature, that's somewhere around 8 to 10 parts per million. And once you hit that point, you're not getting any more oxygen in. You can, however, speed up the process. Blender is, uh, that'll do an excellent job of fully saturate your wine with oxygen. And now that you've filled your wine with as much oxygen as it can take, now, now surely the oxygen is reacting with the wine and the flavor transformation has occurred. But the rate at which wine consumes oxygen is trivially slow. It takes hours, more like days, maybe even a week. For that oxygen to fully react with the wine and be consumed. The amount of oxygen that's consumed probably can't be used to justify any changes to the aroma compounds that are in wine that, at a large enough scale that would actually have a sensory impact. There's a couple of exceptions though, like hydrogen sulfide. It's the smell of rotten eggs, and methyl mercaptan, uh, which is the smell of rotting cabbage. So these compounds could potentially be oxidized, but they're also highly volatile. And when you put that wine out, you're not just allowing it to react with oxygen, you're also allowing very volatile compounds to be lost from the wine. Yes, when you leave your wine out to breathe, you are allowing it to pass gases. I think for the meantime, when I go to a wine bar, I'm gonna keep saying, can you let that wine breathe for a little bit so I don't get ugly stares from the SMEA. Okay, so now your wine has been aerated, and uh-oh, something's wrong. It smells like an old basement that probably should have been aired out a while, an old musty attic. Your wine is corked. The most common contributor to these musty smells in wine are a compound called uh, TCA. Or trichloroanisol. Cork is made from an oak tree. After this bark was pulled down, it was allowed to lay to dry on the ground or be in contact with soil microorganisms. Frequently, that cork material was bleached, and you've got all three ingredients there. Fortunately, in recent years, cork producers have modified many of the practices that result in cork-tainted wine. But if you're unlucky, there's a little trick you can do to remove the TCA from your wine. You can add a nonpolar sorbent, like saran wrap, to your wine. Give it a swirl for a couple minutes. If it's minor TCA contamination, you can pull out your cork taint while not excessively removing uh, other compounds. And perhaps you've rescued the evening. And as you relax and savor and swirl your wine in your glass, you can see these, well, tears falling down the side of the wine glass. You don't actually need to swirl your wine. Take a hairdryer and you can heat the glass of wine and the ethanol will then start evaporating and you'll start seeing tears forming then um, up along the sides of the wine glass. It is not glycerol. What you need to have tears is a mixture of ethanol and water. Dry wine is 98% ethanol and water and at the surface of this mixture, you're going to proportionally lose more ethanol from that thin film of wine than you are um, going to lose water. As the ethanol evaporates from the sides of the glass, more ethanol takes its place, pulling water molecules with it. Eventually, you build up so much water along the sides of the glass that eventually gravity starts to win out and the water will puddle up and make tears and fall back down. And if you really think the tears effect is cool, there's an easy way to heighten it. Turn the shower on. Get a nice and humid in the bathroom. More humid means that you get less water evaporation which means that proportionally your ethanol evaporation is going to be even greater, which means you get even greater tears effects. Swirl, sip, and repeat as necessary. So remember, wine jargon doesn't need to jar you. It can help you to appreciate your evening. Just remember to drink knowledgeably.
For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.